Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Victoria 3 in our alternative history of America. Uh, I've had a talk with the developers. Uh, I had a little little chat. I reached out and they got back to me relating uh, re related to the radicalization. I wanted to really fully understand why, how this works. And uh, I wanted to get a better insight into why it keeps steadily going up despite people's quality of life improving because you have lots more green in the South now. Uh, so quality of life has been improving for everyone uh, universally in the entire country. But radicalization still continues to climb. And I also wanted to understand why this act is allowed to exist. This is a new political movement that's popped up to uh, help us enact agrarianism in the country, uh, which is essentially just a rural lifestyle sort of thing, you know, agricultural development community. Um, the reason why I wanted to know how this exists, this thing has no political, uh, sorry, no interest groups uh, behind it, and yet it's existing. And, and when this exists, it's not the it's not the revolution bar. It, it's this. Whenever any political movement exists, the radicalization will climb. It's scripted into the game. It's actually coded. I can confirm it. It's coded right into the game. This line go up when anything over here related to political movements exist, which I find to be sucky, uh, especially when this can form with no interest groups. Um, I also wanted to reach out and ask why I had marginalized interest groups able to join the political movement. So I go to the evangelicals here. We saw this earlier. I was pointing this out in the last in a, in a later video or earlier video. Um, and interest groups considered marginalized. And if you read the tooltip, it says they cannot join government, political movements or parties. And so this I, I wanted to better understand how they were able to get into that before. Um, actually, let me let it run. Sorry. Um, how they were able to get into that before when they were marginalized. So I had my theories and I was trying to talk them through with you, but I decided I'm going to reach out and talk to the devs instead to just get a firm grasp on how it works. And so here's the answer. This tooltip is wrong. The game is operating exactly the way it is supposed to. This tooltip is wrong. That's all they said, and they'll fix it later, right? So the tooltip is not supposed to say that they cannot join political movements. They can. They can form political movements and they can join political movements. Being marginalized does not stop that. So in that case, there's no reason to suppress them. And I can uh, go in and not have them suppressed anymore and get my authority back and put my authority to work in some other ways, right? So I'm just going to do that. Um, so suppressing them is not helping me into preventing them from making this, which was the entire plan I had initially when I went to form, uh, when I wanted to form a new, uh, a new culture and a new government. Um, so I figured if I could marginalize the ones that hated the things I wanted, then I could just do it. And um, not the case. The second thing is that these political movements can pop up from unorganized populations. So if there's enough of the population that wants something, even though they're not properly organized into an interest group, uh, they can still cause a movement to happen. And this is the part where I don't necessarily agree with the balance of it. I think it's a little bit strong, uh, but that's just me, right? Here's why I think it's a little strong and I'm probably way off base and that's fine. but. There's a random assortment all throughout the country of a certain type of person uh, that's not organized enough to be in an interest group, but they apparently are organized enough to have some sort of nationwide movement. A nationwide movement that will cause, scripted in, more radicals to spawn. So we have 2.66 million radicals. If I hover over top of the change made here, we can see that, excuse me, you can see that 203,000 of them have spawned so that's that's more than like that's way over, over half of these right uh well okay i guess maybe slightly over half but over half of the radicals that have formed have formed because of the unfulfilled political movement demand okay and that's that's this so over half of this growth this this line go up is because of that and this is despite their quality of life being improved because if I hover over top of this you can see the standard of living increases should have brought this up as does pops dying so standard of living increases being 120,000 if you remove the 203,000 uh from this uh this line here radicalization would be almost flat at this time 
And uh, so I, I don't like this. It's very powerful. And I say it, it's, it would be almost flat. And this is despite having a level five home affairs, which reduces 50% re reduction in revolution, secession, progress, speed, as well as 50, negative 50% 50 radicals from standard living decreases and more loyalists from standard living increases. This is the thing. Despite this, more people becoming loyalists because of standard of living increases. And yet I've got level five on that. And it is still this movement with low radicalism and from a random assortment of people around the country is still strong enough to make this line go up. So I, I don't like it, but that is Everything in the game basically is operating exactly the way it is supposed to operate. So I got that out of the way. Now that I understand that better, uh, we can try to push through it and uh, maybe probably fail, honestly, probably fail in, in getting radicalization out of the United States. But at least I can keep going on the economics game because that's the only thing I'm probably good at this game. Okay, the duel. Stapleton Fendel and Jephthah Bankhead challenged uh, each other to a duel. Uh, looks like the aura surrounding their two fingers is like something out of a romantic novel. Jeff the Bankhead smiles. He's been rehearsing this moment before falling asleep. Stapleton Fendall, you are a foolish fool. Your insults cannot go unanswered. <laughs> I don't know where he... Apparently he's from some other place, I guess. <laughs> Pick a weapon of choice and we shall meet tomorrow. So I can let them fight. 50-50 chance that each of them dies. Um, Stapleton Fendall is part of the Southern Planters, Jeff the Bankhead, part of the Rural Folk. And to be honest, I think the Rural Folk are probably the, the more majority assortment behind this movement. Uh, possibly Jephtha himself, if he dies, it might slow this down. So I'm 50-50 uh, shot there, right? Um, or we should stop it and they'll all lose popularity, which I kind of like that too. Uh, and, or we should just ban dueling, which has a negative effect on armed forces and stuff. I'm just going to stop it. I think just having both of those groups have less popularity is just going to be in bad best interest. So um, we'll just go ahead and stop the duel. The, both of those guys, if you notice their ages, they're like in their 70s and stuff. So, I mean, it's not going to take too long before this just happens naturally anyway, I guess. Um, lowering consumption prices. Still need to do this. Apparently, I bet it's my coal. I mean, I bet it's everything, but I, I'm willing to bet it's coal more than anything else. Okay, so I've got that out of the way. So I want to go in and I'm going to form... Uh, I can do this now. I was checking. I can form a trade agreement now with Great Britain. And they would accept the proposal now. They th see me differently now. I don't see how that happened, but they see me differently now. And they would accept it with no obligation requirement, which is kind of nice. And if I do that, um, it will now cost me less bureaucracy to have a trade route with them so now we're up to 117. now there's also something else i wanted to do and that is the incorporation of these states but i won't be able to do this for a very long time uh and i wanted to show you why but before i show you why i want to go in and make sure i get uh i'm gonna make sure i get uh this migration attraction um national values social mobility emergency relief i'm trying to State penalties from turmoil. See, so I'm trying to figure out if there's anything I can do with my authority to reduce radicalism. Um, and the only thing I can really think of here is, um, you know, just like greener grass campaigns and stuff. But that's just migration attraction. That doesn't, I don't think that's really going to help me uh, do what I want to do here. Um, maybe assimilation. Maybe assimilation. I don't know. Um, we'll try to assimilate uh, Alabama and uh, Georgia. And uh, let's go... Where are the radical states? Looks like Louisiana's pretty red. Yeah, Louisiana's pretty red. Uh, I probably should do these ones out here, though, because that will help assimilate them into our national values, right? So um, it won't let me do that, okay? Uh, so we'll do Louisiana and Arkansas and Tennessee. So we'll we'll just start using our, our authority to, to do this for a while and see if we can't get these guys to, like, assimilate a little bit better. And maybe they won't be so radical. I have no idea if that's going to help. We'll see. Um, we'll watch that line, and if it goes down, then it's going to work. So anyway, uh, incorporating these states into the union, right? This is a state action, and I should have done this a long time ago, so I made a mistake. Yes, it, it would have taken 20 years to happen, and 20 years has come and gone. So we would have had these states now, and we'd be collecting the national taxes for those states. Uh, but now that these states have gained population and they have infrastructure, because I've developed them, well, now it costs a lot more bureaucracy to get them in. And that is unfortunate. 
Now, I could go in and try to incorporate American Colorado because um, I have just enough bureaucracy to make that happen. So we're going to try that. And that's just enough bureaucracy to get one of these states incorporated. So we're left with a balance now of 85.9 bureaucracy of remaining. If I want to get the other states, and I do, then I'm going to need to get a lot more bureaucracy. So this is going to take 21 years. That's a long, long time. Um, Colorado also has un has discoverable resources. There's resources we have not seen yet in Colorado. And so, um, you know, as technologies advance, that will probably uh, be a good thing. Speaking of technology advancing, if we go to buildings for tech for Kansas, we can see that oil rigs are available now and we have the ability to have an oil uh, to pump oil now. Which is fantastic because our oil has been uh, quite expensive, I believe. Uh, it's a little 12% surplus now. So we can get that taken care of by adding more supply without whaling. I like that. Um, now, this is discovered because we have uh, researched pump jacks. So with, now that we have pump jacks, we can see oil. I imagine that Texas will also have oil, if it's historically accurate at all, if it's geographically accurate. I imagine Texas will have a whole bunch of oil. Uh, but that you can't see that, though. In their in their resources uh, and that's because probably mexico doesn't have pump jacks and so they haven't unlocked the ability to see that i also am a little bit annoyed that these guys and these other countries do not seem to be fully utilizing their resources in their state uh they seem to really prioritize agriculture above everything else and so having things like gold mines just sitting here doing absolutely nothing in arizona really grinds my gears man Okay, when we take Arizona, we're, we'll go ahead and activate those. Huh? Uh, so I want to get more bureaucracy uh, in my government. I need to have a whole lot more bureaucracy. And so we're going to spend a little bit of money now from the government coffers to uh, expand government just a little bit more so that I can hopefully incorporate more people. <clears throat> uh, electrical capacitors are on. Good. Uh, electric sewing machines for the textile mills is probably where I want to go next. Uh, so we can go into the textile mills and we can get the... Craftsman sewing, which should give me more luxury clothes, really bring the price down on luxury clothes like crazy. Uh, and it only just barely changes the price of regular clothes. And then I'm going to go in and get electric sewing machines, which is going to allow clothes to uh, go down in price because it's going to enable me to create more clothes. And it will have no effect on luxury clothes, which is kind of nice. So now we can do both of those things with the electricity. To get more electricity, though, we're going to need to expand our power plants. And so Michigan's going to have a power plant increase. And uh, I think that's probably it. I thought I put another power plant. Was it in uh, North Carolina? Virginia, maybe? I, I thought for sure I added a power plant around here somewhere. Uh, our arms industry is kind of falling by the wayside here. And if I was to go in and make, say, more... Hmm. Well, the problem is that doing this is going to lower the prices of everything which is going to lower profitability of this place so i would need to use less laborers uh but i can always output my my rifles right i can sell arms sell the weapons so sell artillery breech loaders and repeating rifles we could sell these things hopefully on the market uh if there's anyone that's willing to buy them and uh by selling them we can then keep the demand higher and allow our industries to profit and pass that economic value that we are, from things we are creating pass the economic value from whatever who's, whoever's importing it to us which is what i'd like to do um so i mean small arms doesn't seem like anyone really wants this we'll sell it to the french if they'll if they'll take it but it doesn't seem like they really want to take it uh they seem to like all of this is just tens across the board nobody Nobody seems to want these. What about artillery? Can we do anything with artillery? Can we sell artillery? Nobody wants that either. We'll sell it to the Dutch. Probably will become an unproductive trade route. Uh, well, I can also go ahead and try to sell our guns to the French. Again, probably will become an, uh, a bad trade route, but we will see. Uh, now that we have a trade route with the British, though, I was kind of hoping we would have expanded abilities with the British. Doesn't seem like that's the case either, unfortunately. So uh, we'll have to look at that. Uh, so coal is still the only thing that's exorbitantly expensive. Everything else is getting it's pretty reasonable. 5%, 7%, no big deal. Uh, seems like most of this stuff is okay. Uh, this The glass we need to improve, which we're, is currently on the queue. There's glass right there. Uh, so, you know, the stuff that's currently in you know, Colorado's gold fields is depleted. All right, well, whatever. 
Um, the the uh, resources that are currently uh, inflated here in their pricing, uh, we are already in the process of expanding those industries in the queue. I just have to wait for that to happen. Um, one thing we're not in the process of is getting sugar going. And so I think um, I think sugar was down down here. Yeah, Florida has sugar. And if I want Florida to thrive, then I need sugar to, uh, to thrive too. So we'll go automatic and then we'll go rail transportation. Uh, and then I think a uh, good idea here to make sure that there's a railway. There is. And uh, we have a port. Excellent. So they have good infrastructure then, right? Yes. Good. Um, we have not incorporated this state. It costs too much bureaucracy. So I'm, again, working on getting my bureaucracy up uh, so that I can uh, go ahead and incorporate more states if possible. The Communist Party and the Democratic Party have both simultaneously formed in the United States. Uh, okay, so that's is 19, it's 1872, and we have com Communist Party in the United States. Fun times. Uh, it looks like the armed forces. The, the army has decided that they are now the Communist Party. Um, what do they stand for? Well, they stand for professional army. Uh, loyalist, yep. Uh, per capita taxation, they want that. Patriotic, okay. Uh, they want secret police, national guard, militarized police force, outlawed dissent. They don't want free speech. I mean, the military has not wanted free speech for a long time. But uh, anyway, that is what it is. So uh, we now have a different party. I'm not really concerned about what they're called. I realize the comments will probably go off about that. Um, speaking of which, I've had uh, several people already, and. I've had a couple people even say, you know, why do you have to, to make disclosures? You don't have to disclose that you're only talking about the game. We know you do have to do that <laughs> um, because I've already had, I, if, I, if I'm being honest, maybe 12, 13, I think, uh, people I've had to delete or ban uh, just because they've decided to go off on me on political things that had nothing to do with the game at all. And uh, again, if you're angry about something, you should just, you know, exert that frustration on the voting ballot you should do that because that's what your rights are um but to come into my comments and you know berate me about political things not only is it unproductive but it's just super, super uncool it really says a lot more about you than the people that you are supposedly hating on so uh like try to keep that clean and try to keep an open mind as well as maybe some maturity and realize that again everything i'm saying i was very upfront about this everything i'm saying is within the context of the game and victoria 3 uh, in the United States in, 18, in the 1800s and, and not in uh, in modern times, okay? So, again, I've said that many times. I've been told I don't have to say it, and yet here we are uh, still deleting comments and trying to keep the peace. Uh, so please keep the peace for me so I don't have to do it. Thank you. Um, kindly burn this letter. Okay, so Stapleton Fendall has been accused of gross corruption, and uh, we have evidence to prove it. So uh, we're going to we're going to say that the Democratic Party has a lot less momentum, which will give the Communist Party more momentum. Will the Communist Party end up being the party that wins the election? <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, no progressives. Okay, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this looks pretty orange. But the Communist Party has made a stride up. They're not still not as good as the People's Party yet, uh, and progressives are still way ahead. Uh, but that party has uh, some steam. <laughs> so alternative history in America, having a Communist Party would be president would be like, that's, that certainly is alternative history, isn't it? Um, all right. So uh, France is declaring neutrality, all these things. Oh, oh, I wanted to go into this too. I wanted to, I wanted to share with you because um, I see neutrality on all these things for this war. And when when somebody said this to me, it's episode one, a couple of people actually said it to me. When this was said to me, I felt really bad. I almost wanted to start over. I mean, I'm not going to do that in the middle of a playthrough, but I wanted to start over uh, because I could have helped the Native Americans. I could have helped the Comanche. I could have helped all of these guys to defend their lands. Uh, it, it could have happened, and I didn't know how. Um, so apparently when you're, when there's a war, going on which apparently we're losing a war right now what what are we what what there's a war liberian peasant revolt liberia are you guys surprised i know where liberia is <laughs> um liberia capital state uh why am i involved in this war Because Liberia is my ally, I guess? 
I, I, I don't understand. I don't know how I got in on this, but I feel like we should go in there, you know? Maybe it's too late. I think it's probably too late, though, right? To, to mobilize and get in there. There's no uh, there's no troops in there, right? The war leader has no troops in there right now. There's there's barely any... I mean, we could just mobilize and go. Let's defend our friends. <laughs> I, I don't care about those guys. I just, like, I don't understand how I got involved in that war in the first place. But, all right. Well, in any case, uh, maybe it had to do with the French. The French have been getting me into a lot of war, so it's, poss it's possibly it's uh, their fault. I, I could blame the French. I think I'm. I think it's okay to blame the French when it's quite clearly the French's fault. Uh, so I want to again expand government, which is what I'm working on doing right now. Very productive. Uh, we have the hand cranked machine gun. Okay, so our army defense goes up and our kill rate goes up. With our automatic machine guns which i'm gonna have an arms industry i think in uh you could do it in tennessee let's have tennessee be the place to go if you want your hand cranked machine guns <laughs> the nationwide provider of hand cranked machine guns in tennessee <laughs> there you go uh land of plenty I like this. Um, country's high standard of living has resulted in widespread sense of contentment with the status quo, favoring Jemp the Bankhead. Great. So, favoring the rural folk, which again are steadily making line go up. Um, if it's not broken, why fix it? I don't want this momentum. Um, I don't think I want this pop attraction either. So, I'm just going to give momentum to the People's Party, I guess. I don't want either one of these two things to happen, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, do that. And then I think. Uh, I can't I can't suppress them because they're part of the government. But once the election is done and the progressive party wins, I can, in fact, kick them out if I want to. But look at the relationship I have with all these these people. Right. Even the southern planters are neutral to me now with plus four. They're almost happy. Right. Royal. Happy, 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 happy. Everybody's happy. Even the evangelicals are happy. It's kind of wild, right? And, and yet, and yet, the radicalization goes up. <laughs> Line go up, you know? That's so why I, I don't agree with how it's implemented. I don't. It should not be going up as fast as it is. Uh, you can change it. Uh, you just have to go into a text file and modify a number. But um, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play the game the way it's designed. I just don't agree with that particular element. Uh, so let's get uh, our fish. Fish are around the same, around average pricing. You can tell that by the icons. Uh, logging camps. Electricity is very expensive right now. So let's see about dealing with that. Uh, we have a good expansion habit of the power plant already in three weeks, actually. So let's allow that expansion to finish. And when it finishes, hopefully the price... Well, I know the price will go down, but whether or not it goes down enough, it remains to be seen. So there it goes. It's now been expanded. And as we generate more electricity... Okay, so we have lots of things happening, but you can see the electricity price is going to decrease uh, as we uh, as we uh, get more productivity in this factory. This line will start going down. Uh, combustion engine unlocked. Woo! Yay! The combustion engines, guys. We're gonna have cars now. I'm very excited about cars. That dramatically improves people's ability to get around and go do the places, go the places, and do the things they want to do. It also means we're gonna need more oil. So uh, these oil rigs are not that profitable yet. We can use the combustion engine derricks to add more oil into the economy, which is already stupid cheap. Um, but so we'll use less laborers, which will hopefully allow them to uh, profit more and more specialized labor as well. There's also tanker cars we can use, which will also reduce how many laborers it takes. So again, they can pay more wages. Uh, they can pay higher wages because they have less people to pay and they can profit more. But they're not going to profit more unless, of course, there is a demand for the product that they're producing. And right now there just isn't. So let's see if we can make a higher demand for the product that they are producing. Uh, yeah, still silk shortage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silk, silk, silk shortage. Yeah. Two trade routes are completely useless. Uh, I trade silk with anyone yet? No. We'll try the British market. I mean, we'll try the French market and the Russian market and the Austrian market for all I care. Just try the markets that can bring in silk, damn it. 
let's reform our government uh we can probably get rid of the communist party now by southerner by armed forces dug your own grave on that one uh and then uh the rural party is still the people's party and uh we would actually get a little bit of reduced uh reduced legitimacy by doing that but uh and we're actually not allowed to do that because the bourgeoisie wants to join the progressive party yikes yikes i don't want them as part of my party but okay they want in and so there you go and then i can now get the people's party out um and now i can start suppressing them because uh i want their clout to go down in hopes that maybe this will have uh, a lower effect so we're going to go into our decrees go into our promote national values and we're going to remove let's say uh let's remove it from arkansas for now i believe i need 100 to suppress correct if i'm not mistaken on that i've been doing it all game so i should know how much it takes uh it's uh it's not it's not possible it takes 200 weekly to suppress okay i don't know how much it takes apparently uh it's, it has been a little bit of time i've played other games in the meantime but okay so uh let's uh take and uh i guess we'll stop promoting national values in it's over here right decrees promote national values and we'll stop doing it in louisiana i suppose uh we'll just keep doing it the way we are i guess so we're up to almost three million radicals which is now going to eclipse how many loyalists we have gg game gg actually the support for agrarianism is growing i mean maybe i just give it to them you know, like, I, I don't want to, but there's really no downside of doing this. Interventionism is is here, fine. But if we do agrarianism, it doesn't have any negatives to me, other than maybe less capitalists. That's all it really is, is less capitalists, uh, less urbanization, which, I don't know. I'd rather just do laissez-faire, to be honest, but it is what it is. Um, you know, or even traditionalism would be okay with me. It's just, um, you know, less taxation capacity. And I really like to uh, get a lower interest rate on my loan. Look at that, man. Like, laissez-faire would be great. So uh, I like to do that, but I, I just can't enact it. There's not, no chance of it passing. So if I do agrarianism now, if I put that in place, then here you are. We can placate this and, uh, you know, maybe just stop this from going up anymore. Because it's just, you know, that's what it is. Uh, for the tech tree, now that we have the combustion engine, we have pump jacks. Uh, I'm thinking about going in and maybe getting uh, plus 20 economy of scale for shift work. Rotating teams of laborers in and out of a workplace is a sound way to maintain a steady flow of production over the course of a day or much longer than to be expected from one team working extended hours. I just assumed that we were already doing this type of thing in America, but I guess not. So yes, shift work, please. Economies of scale. Always a good thing to have uh, on your side. Questionable practices. Hello. Released patients from the Washington Asylum <laughs> have steadily denounced the practices involved in their supposedly medical treatments, mistreatment of the sick, withholding of their personal letters, and disproportionate punishments were among the charges. It would make us sit in a chair for hours, if not the whole day, in silence. We wouldn't talk to any other patient, not even read a book. They would only excuse us to go to the restroom if we were lucky. Otherwise, it was just a rusty chamber pot. No food, no water. If we were not sick when we were admitted, we would be within a, we would be within a few weeks. Those type of conditions, I bet you'd be sick within a few days. Um, the judgment cannot be trusted. Um, we need to entirely revise how asylums work. So that's incredibly expensive. No, thank you. Uh, but we raise the standard of living, I suppose. Or the trade unions can take over the asylum administration. Uh, well, we lose 10% bureaucracy, and I can't afford that right now because I really want to uh, get those other states incorporated. So I'm not going to do that one. Uh, I need to get out of debt. So I think I'm just going to take this. The judgment cannot be trusted, and the trade unions will have a lower approval. I, 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 don't, I don't particularly like that because the trade unions are now going to be negative to me if I do this. Uh, and it would cost me... A, it's just going to cost me so much money here, though. $22,900 in government expenses for the next five years. I mean, imagine. This is how much my government expenses uh, like go up. That's insane. $23,000 is insane. That's, that's millions of dollars. Um, 
I'm going to be paying millions. I, I don't want to be paying millions for this. Just for a 1.0 standard of living increase. Uh, so I'm thinking... Uh, I'm thinking I'm just going to take this judgment. So we're going to be down negative, negative 1 here on this. Unfortunately, that's just to be the way it is. And uh, we will continue so that I can uh, hopefully get out of debt here. We are down to 5.7 million. And we're still constructing things. We're not, we're not dead in the water here. Motor industry is expanding. There we go. Franco-Canadian migration. Going to the state of Niger. Okay, well, have fun with that. Uh, looks like plants are good. Energy cost is still a little bit high, but we have another power plant. I know we do. I added another one. I just have to find it. Power plants. There are two of them. Uh, there are three of them. Missouri has one and New Hampshire has one. We can go ahead and increase both of those. And I think maybe we need to get more capitalists to add more investment to the investment pool because they are well, they're, they're there to add things to my, my pool so that I can uh, build these things with their money instead. So uh, I'm thinking maybe we go and make the paper mills in the country publicly traded. This will add 200 more capitalists. If I do it to all of the paper mills, it's only 200, 900 more capitalists. Uh, so we'll make all the paper mills a publicly traded industry um, in the nation. Uh, so Dunder Mifflin just went public. Are you are you uh, are you gonna buy some stock? Huh? Do you believe in Michael Scott? Or is it Jim? Jim. I mean, to be honest, let's say Jim really runs that office, right? <laughs> not the assistant to the original manager, of course not. Shortages of silk. So like, I feel like the sh the silk shortage is. Just this inevitable thing that I can't escape, right? Um, at least the, the trade routes that I set up recently aren't terribly bad. I mean, they're, they're still doing something. Um, you know, like... Uh, yeah, American routes. We're already bringing in silk from Great... Oh, that's why I can't. We're already bringing in silk from Great King. Or Quing. Or Ching. Or whatever it is. I, I don't know. I've heard, like, many different ways of saying this. I would just assume that it's king, but it is what it is. Um, so we're already bringing in silk from these roots. They're just not very productive. That's why I can't establish it, I think. Because it's already existing. And so, like, I need to get this to be bigger. I need to get this to be much, much bigger. Um, also, exporting hardwood. Level 10 trade route to export hardwood to the United Kingdom. That's pretty good. Uh, and the price of it in our market is actually still high, so we can produce more of it. Can produce more of it. Oil rigs are up. Let's get that going, too. Um, I want to... Where the hell are my logging camps at? I don't have logging camps established in any of these damn things. Uh, we, can, we can establish this, uh, and then the price of hardwood should drop a little bit here uh, with that factory, and then I can also increase this by two, I think. And those things uh, will get built out of the investment pool. So you can see that the change in the investment pool is decreasing while my government expenses are hitting the debt. So getting more capitalists into the United States is a good thing in that way. Um, I think glass. You can make more glass. Maybe we get that going in Iowa. More glass works. Uh, increased government a couple steps, as well as getting the glassworks there increased a couple of steps. Now, the, the government increases, of course, do not come out of the investment pool, so that's going to hit my budget a little bit while those are being built. But my capacity is so high that I can just do all of these things at once now. All right, we have agrarianism, which should reduce the number of radicals. And you can see a big decrease in the number of radicals. Boom, done. So that's huge. And... Uh, yeah, political movement, successful political movements has caused almost a million of them to drop off the radical scale. Uh, so we have agrarianism now. Uh, this funds in the, in the investment pool can now be used to build agriculture, plantations, ranches, and infrastructure. Uh, so that's pretty good. So now we can use investment pool stuff to, for example, uh, add to our sugar plantations because we need more sugar as well. So we'll go ahead and bump that up like three levels. And now the investment pool can be used for those things as well. 
Um, now, of course, we're using 152,000 in construction goods right now, building things. I'm really hoping that the power plants, because these also can not be constructed with... Uh, basically, all of these things that are here, aside from the glass works, cannot be constructed with investment pool funds. And so we're going to, we're basically going to find ourselves in massive deficit here in a second and boom, there it is. And a huge deficit again, uh, as we build the rest of these things. And then the sugar plantations will add sugar supply for the food industry here, uh, in Tennessee. Um, this, these guys are going to make, yeah, breech loaders. Uh, these guys should be pretty profitable. These, this, White rolls and stuff are in demand. Did you just get built or what? There it goes. Yeah, you you just have to hire people, you know? You know what? Probably need qualifications, right? And so let's add more qualified people to work there by introducing a university. Um, we'll go level two university. This will increase the number of people that are qualified to work in these specialized jobs by giving training to people. All right, shift work is done. That's great. Uh, now we can maybe look for pasteurization, which will unlock refrigerated storage. This should help our food industry a lot. Uh, we can also do electric railways. Not really ready for that yet. Um, pneumatic tools could be cool. Pneumatic tools. Uh, one of the greatest forces man can harness is the air itself. Pressurized air applied correctly in pipes and pistons can provide an astounding amount of force for industrial use. This will lead to arc welding, but it also gives us a 15% construction sector mod uh, building throughput and more resource discovery. I like this. We'll go with that instead. I like that a lot. As long as our construction sector can do things faster, uh, that's great. Are we going to be shamed because we lost this war over in Liberia? I like this too. Look at this. Country dot get definition dot get adjective. <laughs> I mean, this is the full release version of the game too. Um, I'm not. I'm no longer on the pre-release. The, the so I, I'm on the same version everyone else is as of this video. So uh, I find that funny too. The game's not quite done not yet, I guess. Uh, silk prices dropped. That's great. So apparently our import roads are doing something. Artillery and dye is even dropping down now. So we're having stabilization. Hmm? Stability is taking place, hopefully. Despite not enjoying full rights under the American law, some wealthier Afro-American people have begun moving into neighborhoods and frequent frequenting establishments that would normally be excluded from. So this is where I want multiculturalism to come in. Um, so they fairly earn their success with all it entails. So this is going to drop an interest group approval for two people who just want, really want segregation. Um, and if we do this, well, then 50% radicals from discrimination. So uh, I'm just going to take the interest group disapproval. That's fine. And then we're going to go into politics, go to ins nope, laws. We're going to go to racial segregation. And I am going to put in multiculturalism. Though This is, of course, going to make some people really upset, not quite radicalize the evangelicals thankfully um but it's going to make everybody a little bit more upset if i get any uh random events that uh if i get any random events that would whoa hang on stop what is this multicultural oh, so my bureaucracy is tanking my bureaucracy is tanking uh, what happened? It just all of a sudden dropped. Did you see that? As soon as I enacted this, the bureaucracy plummeted. Does that law have a decrease in bureaucracy or something? I didn't see that on the list. The racial segregation gives us plus 100 authority, uh, shares a heritage cultural trait with anybody that doesn't, that says authority, not bureaucracy. Um, we go down to multiculturalism and it doesn't say anything about that. doesn't say anything about that. So I'm not entirely sure why that would be a thing. That is interesting to me. Okay. Uh, also, the Southern planters are starting to get a little bit more clout. I don't like that. We're going to suppress them. <laughs> All right. So I need more bureaucracy, apparently, because my bureaucracy has now plummeted and I'm getting tax losses out of it. So that's not good. Uh, we'll go ahead and find a state. Let's pause it really quick, actually. Find a state that has close to the maximum taxation capacity, and we'll add a government administration building there, uh, which is going to take a while. Honestly, this is going to take 
probably too long just to click through all the different states we have um whatever one i'm currently rapidly expanding is probably best to do yeah we're i don't know i don't know uh we can do new york once i guess usually pretty good i guess new york is a pretty big place now uh but infrastructure in pennsylvania i suppose we can up that by two help the government be a little bit bigger there too uh maybe kentucky i suppose can have a couple more levels here as well and of course that's going to put us in massive debt because those buildings cannot be investment pooled which honestly we don't have any investment pool now anyway so yeah here we go now we're not constructing as many buildings at a time though so it should be still okay six million in debt <laughs> will i ever not be in debt hmm? as soon as i get the bureaucracy under control i think i'm just gonna chill uh oh look we have more radicals yeah enacting censorship now people want censorship now people want their voices to be silenced in america they want censorship guys can you believe it it's crazy completely against their own interests the motor industries the motor industries is now going to switch to making automobiles and automobiles are going to become very very cheap um but i don't see any industry that really needs this so it looks like it's only used right now in barracks really only used in a barracks barracks uh so barracks can get shrapnel artillery that's pretty cool uh ammunition goes way up oh i can focus these guys on these things i had no idea cavalry scouts we do motorized reconnaissance okay so this is how this works so army power projection goes up uh plus 10 offense plus 5 defense plus 30 percent provinces captured which is really nice um we will see automobiles usage and oil usage all good things actually so i'm gonna have all of my barracks uh nationwide at the moment all of my barracks uh or i think development is that what it is yeah barracks all my barracks are going to use motorized reconnaissance now, this is going to create a huge demand for automobiles and we are going to be able to make them we are also making oil anyway so let's give demand to the oil and automobile industries by making cars there we go so we are now going to make automobiles we're going to make cars and the cars we're making there's uh going to be a big discount on them but the price is going to rise as we make more of them and i think the motor industries is finally about to take off i don't know why the productivity is low maybe it's because they have to rehire new people for the different types of stuff um because automobiles is at a surplus engines of course is very expensive now we need the other industries to catch up actually before we do this yeah let's let's not let's not do this um let's not do this quite like we are doing um let's make sure that we yeah that we have engines uh throughout the nation with other places that we're making those engines in the motor industries for example let's make sure we expand the other motor industries before we switch that over because we have to make sure that we have enough to replace it that's um that makes more, more, way more sense to me uh so let me find the automobile industry auto where are you motor industries okay um we only have two it's alabama alabama and michigan so i think we need to add another and maybe we will also make cars in ah oh, what's another state illinois can make them we could make some cars in Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> People from Illinois are going to be like, why is he saying the S? It's Illinois. I'm annoyed that you're not saying Illinois. Uh, let's go ahead and give them a motor industry as well as a food industry. We'll probably need our groceries to start going down now that we have population growth. We'll get that going too. And then I really, honestly, I really have to stop building. <laughs> I know I, I just keep doing it, but that's the game, you know? All right, so multiculturalism is just an enacted. I'm going to pause it because we are we just lost authority. So with multiculturalism act enacted, uh, we now, of course, have this movement where we want to enact censorship, and there's three groups on that, so that sucks. Um, but we have... Uh, uh, we haven't radicalized anybody yet, anyway. Um, but this should... No cultures being discriminated against... Uh, should reduce. 
it should reduce the radicalism from discrimination. Um, at least it, sh it should. Maybe it will go up. Who knows? Um, we can take a look at this and see if that number is going up. So 71,000. Uh, keep, keep taking a look at it. 70,000. So th the radical growth is going to drop because there won't be any from discrimination uh, anymore. Yeah. So finally, the discriminated people, people who have been discriminated against, they are not going to hate the government anymore because the government is not the people are not the people who are suppressing them. They are. We are the people who are liberating them. So they should not become radicalized anymore. And so that should just go away. Uh, so maybe that will decrease the number of radicals overall. That would be nice. And then um, obviously we have opposition group approval going up because our authority is taking a hit. And so we want to do something about that. Uh, let's go into uh, it's here state actions. Nope, decrees here. And we will go ahead and stop promoting the national values in Alabama. And let's just do only Tennessee uh, just for now to make sure we have that surplus of authority. All right, good. So what's next on our docket? Are we going to enact censorship? Or are we going to go straight to protected speech and just really spit in their face, huh? <laughs> The evangelicals are gonna. The evangelicals are gonna hate us then. Uh, one max port level is fine. Protected speech is something I do want. It will. Uh, we cannot bolt. We're not, we're not gonna be able to bolster or suppress interest groups though when we do this. So there will be no more bolstering or suppression while there's protected speech. Um, it will unlock guaranteed liberties in the internal security tab, which is not something that the armed forces will like. Um, but guaranteed liberties will give us uh looks to me wait don't we already have this wait go to laws um we uh yeah we already have this internal security right here took me a while to find this because we already have the you know, the level five home affairs and stuff. So this is already done. We don't need that other one to get that. Uh, so right now we have legal guardianship of women again, right? So I think now we can go to women's suffrage, which will really make the evangelicals super mad. Negative 20 for them right now. Holy cow. Evangelicals are really going to hate me after this. And the Southern planters will really hate me. And this is just a bad time for this. We're going to get revolt if we do this now. I'm sorry, women. There's just no way I can give you rights without a, a, a civil war on my hands, right? There just isn't. I need the, I need their, the, the radicalism to drop, and I can't have that happen until they stop proposing these things. So, I'm just gonna have to keep going, man. Damn. Uh, so the barracks, I believe, are still set to do the automobiles. Yes, they are. So we're going to put that back to cavalry scouts. And uh, because they're still set to do that, we don't want that right now. Uh, okay, so as we improve the motor industry in Illinois, we're going to also uh, make that go up by three levels as well. So more of that. And uh, we should be able, with these two being done, we should have a positive balance while constructing these two. And so I think now, guys, now is the time where I am going to putting my hand up. You can't see it, but I'm putting my hand up in the air, okay? I'm going to allow our debt to go down, okay? I will now lower the debt <laughs> by stopping all this crazy spending, okay? I'm not going to spend anymore, all right? Uh, so we're going to let this go. Apparently, we're being brought into another war. Thanks, France. Um, we're going to let this go. Um, and I want to see, just out of curiosity, because we've had a trade route with these guys for a while, is it possible to, I don't know, have an alliance with you yet? Oh, right. We can't do that because we have to have multilateral, uh, multilateral alliances is what it's called. Yeah. Multilateral alliances has to be researched by us. Um, and also multilateral alliances has to be researched by Great Britain as well. Yeah, that's not going to happen for a while. So if we want Great Britain to be on our side, we're going to have to, I guess, drop France as an ally. Which doesn't seem like a good idea at the moment, but um, yeah, I don't know about that. 
mean, France is doing a lot of things at France. Look at look at France. <laughs> look at France. They are all over the place, man. They are taking over all this territory. Their infamy has got to be enormous. Yeah, 40.3 infamous. They're just going, dude. They are acquiring colonies. Absolutely. And place and a place in the sun through any means necessary. That's their strategies right now, man. Just massive colonialization. Same thing with uh, the British, but they're not nearly as infamous as the French. The French are all over the place, man. And the British have colonies everywhere, too. I mean, look at these highlights. They're everywhere, right? Even in India. Great Britain's all over the place, but we haven't done any of that yet. Um, I've been, I'm just focusing on, on money and trying to get that sorted out. And, uh, you know, America's going to fight itself if I don't take care of it. So I'm just trying to figure that out. So I, I think now is the time to start raising the army, though. Um, once I get rid of the debt, <laughs> once I get rid of the debt, we will, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and raise an army. And then we're going to take back our territory first. And then we'll start moving down through Mexico uh, and, uh, hopefully maybe we can get rid of some of the stuff with Canada. We'll probably have to take, I need to take this, right? The goal is to have all of my original territory. So this state does need to be mine, uh, by the end of this. So, uh, we're going to take, uh, go to, uh, I never remember where the hell this stuff is, man. Is it diplomatic place, conquer state, Alaska, right? We want to take Alaska. And then we also need to go over and take Hawaii as well, right? The following war goals were enforced on the United States. Nothing. <laughs> so basically the war that we just got entered into, they have decided to capitulate and just give in because they were intimidated, uh, which can happen. Um, in fact, it would happen with Mexico if I was to just demand to give me all my states. They would probably just give it to me without any war uh, because we're so strong compared to them. But with Great Britain joining them, they feel more optimistic and then they will fight me. So I don't want to have that happen. So let me let this run for a, a whole long time. Um, hopefully nothing bad happens. Radicalization is flatlined, thankfully, right now because discrimination isn't being added to it. So this may actually end up going okay. The discrimination thing, I think, was kind of the thing that was really pushing it. We have almost no new radicals from discrimination now. And the political movement demands is kind of resting around 77K on this now instead of being like in the 200s and stuff. So there is that too. Uh, but again, we have increased standard of living, and that is offsetting it. As long as you take care of your people, they will take care of you. Uh, that is the hope, anyway. That is, that's what's supposed to happen, anyway. Yep, they capitulated. So now there's finally no wars, and uh, we have cordial uh, negotiations or cordial uh, diplomacy with Cuba, which is kind of interesting. Um if I wanted to ask them to join my, hey, maybe they have something I could do. Uh, if I say I want to conquer these, I don't really want to conquer them. But if I if I wanted to, I could. Um, I wanted to see if, uh, uh, not not trade agreement, join our customs union. So they won't because there's no existing diplomatic pact of this type to transfer. And they're already a subject of another country. Oh, it's Spain is the only one I can, only one I can do this with is Spain, and they still will not accept my proposal. Although we're getting up there a little bit more, but it is what it is. Okay, so I will let this run until the debt is gone. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I do, however, need to expand government a little bit to offset bureaucracy. But aside from that, I'm gonna let this run until the debt is gone. Okay. And uh, when we come back, we should have a renewed uh, sense of, of, of a capability because of our no debt, right? We're currently giving up eight and a half thousand every tick here uh, because of interest. And I don't want to deal with that anymore. So um, thank you for watching. I very much appreciate it. And um, <laughs> again, I, I would love to do military. I would. I would. I really love it. As long as I didn't think my people would revolt at me at the same time. All right. Take care. We'll see you. Bye bye.